Hello there guys. Right, I wanna share a token with you that is a must buy. I am gutted that I have missed out on the pre-sale phase one, two, and three of this one. Unfortunately, I've got to buy with you lot on the DX sale. This is gonna be huge. Uh, I strongly recommend it, but obviously not financial advice. Do your own research or just watch this video and I'll do some research for you. Right, this is Banker Doge. Now, I did mention uh, Banker Doge as a company when I was talking about Vegas Doge. Now, Banker Doge supplies vaults that other tokens can use for staking and all of that stuff. So at the moment they're working with Tiki, they're also working with um, Vegas Doge, but they've got their own token as well called All True Coin or something like that. Now, uh, they've actually releasing a Banker Doge token and the Banker Doge token is being fed by all the other stuff that they're doing. So they've got the vault, which is what the other tokens are using. And for people to use that vault, they've got to either hold this new Banker Doge token or they've got to pay a fee. And the fee is going to be used to buy Banker Doge token. And it's also going to be distributed to the people that are actually staking their Banker Doge token in the vault. Now, I know all this sounds a little bit complicated. We're going to dig into it a little bit deeper. I also want to show you in the code as well, because there's a couple of things in the actual contract that I think are really, really interesting. Now, the, the main idea behind like the Banker Doge company is to allow like DeFi abilities for existing tokens. So if you've got a token already, it's gonna enable you to use their system so that you can do staking and time locking and even DeFi lending. So they're kind of working a little bit like a bank. That is huge. Uh, this is a really good opportunity for other people that have tokens to use their system. And it is brilliant for people that are uh, actually holding their token itself. Now, when they went through these pre-sale phases, the first thing I will say as a caution is the people that bought in phase one, two, and three have got their tokens at a discount. So they're already going to be in profit at launch. And the people that hold old true coin actually got an airdrop of some of the Bank of Doge coin. So they're going to be in a big profit as well. So bear in mind that when this goes to public launch, all of these people and the DX sale as well, they could sell and the price would go down. So you need to make a decision. If you want to buy this, you can either buy on the DX pre-sale, which is what I intend to do, or you can wait. And after the token is launched, there is a very strong possibility that some of the people that buy in this phase will dump their tokens. Now, it doesn't matter how much it is a good idea to hold a token, that always happens. You get people who simply look for pre-sales with a discount, they buy a load of tokens, and then immediately on launch, they just dump them, take the profits, and move on. Now, those people do always take a little bit of profit, but they miss out on the really big profits, but they just keep kind of rinse and repeat. So those people, if they are gonna do that on this particular token, they will create, uh, create a dip after launch. So this is what you have to decide. Uh, do you want to get in on the DX pre-sale and sort of guarantee your tokens? Or do you want to wait until the public launch and then some of the people who bought early and got a discount might dump and then you might get the token even cheaper than pre-sale. So bear that in mind that if you miss the DX pre-sale, which is in a couple of hours, so I have made this video a bit late, there is still a chance to get in on this token. The people who have it cheap might dump the price and you might get a discount. For me, I want to hold this token. I think it's a no-brainer. I would rather secure my tokens by getting them on the DX uh, pre-sale. So I want to just quickly jump over to that. Um, it has two hours and 43 minutes until it goes live. Uh, so I will leave the link to this in the description. Uh, it's got some comments down here, people talking about this looks great. Uh, it's already got a project in place before it's launching. And then you've got the usual FUD where people are saying, run away, it's a scam, they'll steal all your money. There's an unlocked wallet. Uh, there's raised a huge amount of BNB before the pre-sale. It's just a cash grab. Uh, so you always get this on every token. I personally think that all the people that are saying stuff like this have not looked into the project. If you look into the project, you'll see exactly what's going on with that money. You'll see that it's an established project that has been around for a while. It's already working. They've already got the vault. They're already partnered up with like Tiki and also they're partnered up with Vegas Doge and they're using their own coin through the vault as well. So I mean, I, I'd take these this FUD messages down here with a pinch of salt. I think this is just people that are looking at very, very simple things. And normally, when a token launches on DX, they are a scam. 
when they've got things in place like a wallet that is not locked and holds a portion of the tokens or a huge amount of BNB that's been raised before the actual launch. Uh, so yeah, a lot of people here are not very happy, are they, look? But I believe in this one, I really do. Also, if you watch the videos of the guy chatting about this, I mean, I, I spend 20 years as a hypnotherapist studying body language and things like that. That's my area of expertise, is human psychology. The guy looks really genuine, and he actually talks about Tiki in a very humble way, saying they're partnered with Tiki, which is a much bigger project than what they are. I mean, I, I think that's quite nice. Um, I, if you know anything about NLP with ISS and Qs and things like that, when he's specifically talking about their plans, the project, the business, if you look at the body language, you look at the NLP, I accessing cues, you can see that what he's saying is true. Uh, so it's worthwhile having a look at that stuff if you do um, venture into the realms of body language at all. It was my area of expertise for a really, really long time. I was a stage hypnotist for a long time. I ran my own private hypnotherapy clinic and I've written several books on this subject as well. So it is something that I do know about. So I definitely think that this one is genuine. If it is a scam, he's a bloody good actor. Right, let's jump into the contract. Uh, in fact, let's go over to back over to here first of all. Have a good old read through this page. Uh, make sure you do it within the next couple of hours so you don't miss the pre-sale. Um, we have uh, a little introduction video telling you what it's about there. We've also got a video from each of the team members. Uh, these team have worked together for quite a while. I've got to say, this dude looks a little bit like a magician. <laughs> it really does. Uh, so yeah, get to know them, learn a little bit about the project, and you'll um, discover the kind of things that they've got in mind going forward. But I think the really exciting ones is being able to offer like DeFi functionality to existing tokens. I think particularly the idea of staking and lending. Time locking is not such an exciting thing. Uh, but the idea of being able to do lending uh, through your token and um, being able to people people to be able to lock their tokens and stake them inside this system, I think that's really powerful. Now, the reason from a developer point of view that that's important is when you make a token, what you want is for people to buy it and hold it and create a, a price floor on your token. So if you've got your token in a vault that gives people interest for it to be sitting there, then that encourages people to buy the token, lock it in the vault, and then they're committed to hold it for whatever period of time they've got it locked in there for, otherwise they pay a penalty to release it early. It's kind of like how Vegas Doge works. So that is a way of giving your holders interest for them holding your token for a long amount of time, which is good for the health of your token. And that is what Banker Doge is offering to other token providers. That is pretty big from a developer point of view. That's quite exciting. Um, there is white paper, have a good old read through it. Uh, but I want to dig into the actual contract itself. So there's a few things in the contract that are interesting. Uh, in fact, one of the interesting things is the tokenomics are very much heavily weighted uh, in the favour of someone who buys and holds and doesn't sell. So the fees are different on buying compared to on selling. And there are also some anti-whale and anti-dump features, which are a little bit convoluted, but we're going to have a look at them. Uh, so I'm going to jump into that. I've got the contract here. So this is Bank Doge token contract. Uh, I want to zoom all the way down to the transfer function. A lot of this stuff is pretty standard, but there are a few things in here which I haven't seen before in the contract, and I think they're pretty cool. Some of them are kind of future-proof in the code, uh, but there is in here some anti-dump stuff. Have I gone past it? I must have gone past it. It's not this high up. Let's have a look. So, uh, transfer. Right, it's going to be in the transfer function. So, in here. So this is the transfer function. I will say there is the option to pause this contract. Here, look, it's a Boolean trading open. Uh, if it's uh, if trading open is false and the contract is paused, and whilst the contract is paused, if uh, a wallet has been added to excluded from paying the fee, that wallet is able to interact with the contract. So for a lot of people, that's a big red flag. So this is gonna set off alarm bells for some people. The contract can be paused and certain wallets can still interact with the contract whilst it's paused. For me as a developer, it doesn't bother me at all because in every contract, you have the ability to change things like the maximum transaction. And usually the owner of the contract is exempt from the limit of the maximum transaction. But if you move the maximum transaction down to zero, 
it's essentially the same as having the, uh, the trading closed. Nobody can interact with the contract, but because you're exempt from that limitation, you can. So all of this here looks like it's potentially exploitable, which it is, uh, but that exists already in pretty much every single contract as a standard. You can set the transfer to zero, and then the owner of the contract can buy and sell tokens as free as they like, which is also what's happening here with Trade Open. It's just this is much more transparent way of doing that, and sometimes you do have to pause the contracts. Now, particularly, uh, when you deploy a contract, depending on whether you've already given tokens to people and that kind of thing, you don't want somebody to add uh, liquidity for your contract. Because if somebody starts to create liquidity before you do, they will set the price of your token and then it kind of messes up everything you have to redeploy. So this trading open equals false, but still allowing some wallets to interact is one of the ways that you can avoid someone setting your token price when they add liquidity. So that's kind of like a bit of a safety measure. We're starting to see this much more often. Uh, I do it with uh, whitelisting. I whitelist one wallet, no other wallet can interact with the contract. I then use that wallet to add liquidity. So it's using the same functionality. Uh, but what I really wanted to bring your attention to is, have I gone past it again? I can't have done. Oh, here we go. Uh, it's all, all this, um, this cool down. Uh, so it's basically saying if you buy, then there's a cooldown period of about 10 minutes. If you buy again, your cooldown period will be lengthened. So if you keep on buying and buying and buying, uh, there's going to be a cooldown period before you can actually sell. And that period of time is going to get longer and longer depending on how much you buy. So if you buy and try and sell straight away, you won't be able to because you're going to have to wait a period of time before you can sell. Now, that means that this contract will flag as a honeypot in the honeypot.io tool. So if you were thinking of getting this and you don't know whether it's safe and you paste the contract address into their tool, what they have is a bot that will buy the token and then it will immediately, in the same second, try and sell the token. Now, this stuff going on here um, will not allow that to happen. So it will say... This is a honeypot, run away. Uh, so I just want to make you aware of that because if you do go and test this contract in their tool, it's going to make it look like it's a scam, which it isn't. Now that's only going to happen if cooldown mode is set to true. If cooldown mode is switched off, then we can just ignore all of this and you can buy and you can sell you know, immediately. Uh, but the more often that you do buy, it, it accumulates and it can get up to quite a long time. So we've got here, look, uh, it accumulates up to, stop selecting things, it accumulates up to 48 hours. Uh, so if you've bought and bought and bought and bought, it's kind of like considering that you're a bit of a whale. So it doesn't want you to dump all your tokens and it builds up that time before you're allowed to uh, sell your tokens. So I've not seen such a convoluted cooldown time in a contract before. Normally, they just have a bit of a standard saying if you buy, you can't sell within the next 30 seconds or something just to stop sandwich bot attacks. But sandwich bot attacks will only really apply if you've got no fees on your contract, which this has, so it's not going to be vulnerable to those. A couple of other things that I did want to mention in here. Um, it has purge functions, which means that if tokens get stuck on the contract or BNB gets stuck on the contract, it can be removed. Now, that never used to be the case. We never used to see that. And there's a couple of million dollars trapped on SafeMoon because it doesn't have those functions in it. One of the things that's on here that I've never seen on another contract, which really surprised me, and I'm going to steal the code, <laughs> is the ability to purge foreign tokens from your contract. So sometimes, I have no idea why, but sometimes people send just random tokens to your contract and they're just sitting there in the contract. And they're actually including in, in here the ability to remove uh, those tokens. So I don't know if I can find it. But yeah, it really surprised me. I've never seen that on a thing before. It's only a very short line of code. But um, yeah, it, it's the ability to shift uh, trapped BNB, trapped Bank of Doge tokens, or trapped any other token that just happens to be on here because someone, uh, you know, transferred it on. It's this here, look. Uh, transfer foreign tokens. So the, the address of the token, you've got to put that in. So you have to find out what the address is. You send it to where you want to send it to, which would be your wallet address. And then um, it's, it's actually saying here, don't purge the native token. So that's requiring that it's not this token. So it's not, it can't be used to purge Bank of Doge. Uh, but it will be used to check how many of those tokens are on this uh, contract and then uh, send them to the wallet. 
And that's awesome. I've never seen that on a contract before, and I'm definitely going to start using this little tiny snippet of code on my contracts in the future, uh, because it, it does happen. It really does happen. It's weird, but people do send random tokens to your contract, and once they've done that, they're just trapped there forever, doing nobody any good at all. You could purge every foreign token off your contract, transfer it into BNB, and give the BNB to charity, which would be nice. I don't think that's what's happening here, but it would be nice. Uh, we've also got uh, another two functions here, which I was very pleased to see. This one is manually making uh, liquidity and processing all the wallets and things from BNB, which is in the contracts. I, I do a function exactly the same as this one. Uh, I call it manual purge BNB. And uh, I also do a function exactly the same as this one as well, which is purging tokens. So what both of these do is take trapped BNB or trapped tokens tokens from the contract, turn them into liquidity, or turn them into marketing and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, the reason that you get stuff trapped onto the contract is because the maths in Solidity is not very good. So when you do calculations, there's always a rounding error in Solidity. So that means that a few tokens or a little bit of BNB is always going to get trapped there and it builds up over time. So when I look into a contract, I kind of look to see if they've done stuff like this. It doesn't affect me as someone who's holding the token, but it kind of reassures me that it's a genuine project and that people are concerned about these type of things moving forward. Uh, one last thing that I do want to say uh, for the purposes of future proofing this is they've also got this function, uh, which is changing the router. Now, at the moment, we are in, Pan it says Uniswap here, but it's actually PancakeSwap. Uh, Uniswap is Ethereum, PancakeSwap is BSC. Uh, the code is exactly the same, so people just use this, the standard default code. But whenever you see Uniswap, it's talking about PancakeSwap if the token's on BSC. So this particular function means that when version 3 of PancakeSwap router comes out, they can just switch the address and put the new one in. So that is future-proofing this token because you know, router version three might have additional functionality that's better than version two that we're using at the moment. Now, there are quite a few contracts out there that have automatic liquidity being generated and it's going to version one of PancakeSwap uh, and they have very small liquidity pools in version two. Uh, whereas this token is gonna fill up a liquidity pool in version two and when version three comes out, they can very easily change this and start filling up a liquidity pool in version three. Uh, which is cool. It shows that they're thinking about the future. So there were just a few things in there that I just wanted to bring your attention to. Uh, particularly, I wanted to say why this exists, which is the trading open or closed. So yes, they do have the ability to pause trading. That means that you will not be able to buy or sell tokens, but specific wallets will, if they're exempt from the fee, but there's a bloody good reason for it to be there. Now, in my contracts, I actually add another function which can lock this setting so that I can't trigger it again in the future. I think other people should do this as well. Um, the only reason I do that is to give peace of mind to my buyers so that they know I can't pause the contract in the future because you, you generally don't need to. It's only at the beginning where you need to use this. But what all this comes down to, and I know I've said this over and over again in lots and lots of my videos, is there are functions in contracts that can be used for evil or for good. So if you trust the developers, if you look at what they're doing, you look at their history. So with these guys, you can look at the, is it Old True Coin? I think it's called. So that's a previous project that they have. It's been doing really, really well. So you can see the success of that. Uh, you can see that they already have this huge infrastructure in place for Banker Doge, uh, which is a really incredible thing that they've created. So you can see that they are very serious about what they're doing. You can see that they are doxxed. Uh, you can watch the videos of them and, and things like that. Uh, so this gives me peace of mind uh, to buy into what it is that they are producing and what they do in the future, even though their contract has things in it that would normally you know, be a bit of a red flag for me if, um, uh, if I didn't know the developers. Uh, so there are a few things here which would make me very cautious about buying into this. Uh, a huge amount of pre-selling going on where all these people have got discounts. Really, really uh, high possibility those people will dump on launch and the price will go down. Uh, so there could be the opportunity of buying the token cheaper after launch than actually on the DX sale. But that's up to you. That's your gamble. 
I'm personally going to buy on the DX sale. If it dumps after launch and the price, the price goes down uh, significantly, I'll buy more. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll buy up to the max permitted on DX sale, which I think is 3 BNB. Uh, where is it? Oh, 3 point. Oh, that's the hard cap. I was going to say, what? <laughs> where is it? I'm sure it's 3 BNB. Sale, soft cap. But, but there we do, look, 3 BNBs, maximum contribution, 3 BNB, minimum contribution is 0 0.001. So even if you've got hardly any money at all, you can get in on this. The hard cap is really high. Uh, in fact, so is the soft cap. Uh, both of these are really, really high, but it is a huge project with a massive amount of marketing. I think they've generated about $2 million um, already that's gone into the marketing of this project. So this looks huge, but it could sell out quick. Now this DXL is not on a whitelist. Uh, so everybody's got the opportunity to get in on this one at exactly the same time. Whereas normally uh, you, you've got a much, much smaller hard cap as a whitelist and you've got a really struggle to get in there. Uh, but it is a huge project. I don't know how this is going to go. Uh, I don't know whether this is going to fill up pretty quickly or it's a little bit too ambitious. But I know it's a big project, so I expect this to fill up. It could go really fast. I might not upload this video. <laughs> If I upload this video and you watch it before this pre-sale starts, you might buy before me and I might miss out. But no, I am. I am going to upload the video. Uh, it'll be up there in a bit. You'll still have a couple of hours from watching this video to be able to get in on the pre-sale. So there we go. That's my opinion on this token. I think it's a buy and a hold. It's something where if you're holding it, you are going to get rewarded for that. I mean, they've also got a lot of stuff I haven't even talked about, like buybacks and burns that are dynamically created. Uh, so depending on the volume of the token, they're going to be doing buybacks. Uh, they're going to be doing burns, which obviously reduces the circulating supply, which means the token's got a higher value. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff going on as well. Um, they are boosting the tokenomics with external things, which I did mention briefly. Uh, things like having a fee on the, uh, the existing vault and people who, who, who pay that fee the money they make from that is going to be used to actually buy the native um, Banker Doge token. And then that token is going to be airdropped to people that are staking uh, their Banker Doge token in the actual vault itself. So that's going to benefit people. So all of these things are feeding the token from outside. So this is the reason I'm buying into it. Looking at the videos of the people that are supporting this, I do think they're very genuine. But obviously, that's my opinion based on my areas of expertise. So I'm willing to risk my money based on what I think. But you've got to do your own research and come to your own decision. Uh, so that's where we are. I, uh, I hope you buy into it. I hope it makes you a lot of money. Definitely recommend that if you do buy it, you hold. Um, it is a long-term holder. It really is. So just set some money aside. Sit it on here and just let it build up over time. This has the opportunity to be massive. And I, I think um, what's happened recently with Vegas Doge using um, the, the vault and all of that kind of stuff for the staking, I think you're going to find a lot of other tokens are going to start following suit with this. So it was Tiki first of all, uh, then we've had Vegas, and I think that you're going to see this over and over again with the more serious projects. Now, when I did the video on Vegas Doge, and I started looking into their token, one of the things that gave me confidence to buy into their token was the fact that they are using Banker Doge's kind of vault system. That's what gave me confidence on Vegas Doge, is that they are using this. So they're kind of like standing on the shoulders of giants, so to speak. So I see these guys have a bit of a big deal, but I was, I was kind of quite impressed to see that when they talked about Tiki, um, they did it in a very humble way, saying Tiki are a bigger project than what we are. Right, video was a lot longer than I anticipated, but I hope I've covered enough for you to be able to make a bit of a decision on this one. But please do jump into here, watch these videos, use your own judgment and um, you know do your own research. I'm pretty sure that when you go through this stuff, you'll probably think the same as what I do. It looks like a no-brainer, it really does. Right, have an awesome whatever it is, wherever you are. Take care, bye-bye.